I was already an anxious individual. And so I already had that, that worried voice in my head that said, okay, well, what are they thinking? Um, if I say this, what, how will they feel? How will they react? But I, I, you know, because of the um, being developed into a people pleaser at a young age, I did a lot of reflection and I realized that the, the tendency to people please stems from wanting to be like accepted by others and wanting to um, avoid conflict and confrontation. Because as an anxious individual, um, you don't like confrontation. No, like you. No, it just, it makes you feel even more anxious. So I, at a younger age, I learned that, okay, if I, you know, just abide by what this person wants, then they'll like me or I will avoid conflict. And I think a lot of kind of just the interplay between the perfectionism, the anxiety and the people pleasing silenced my voice because I, I had all these like back and forth thoughts in my head, like, Oh, I can't say this, but you know, I, I don't want them to get mad at me. So I, I have to do this or, you know, I can't say no, it'll hurt their feelings or, you know, all these things of worrying about other people and not really thinking about, well, what do I want to do? So, you know, I, I, you know, that was from a very young age and, and all the way up into my like young adult years and it, it again as I said it's a journey to start to realize okay what is really causing me all this distress oh I see <laughs> so yeah were there were there instances when you were young of conflict that you like learned that conflict can be dangerous or uncomfortable or is that just an internal sense of like I don't even want to go there I don't even like the thought of it or you know was it I yeah, I would say like as a young kid, seeing adults have disagreements or anything like that, or seeing um, conflict and well, yeah, mostly adults because kids are like sponges, right? You absorb everything. So I, I would say just seeing, you know, some adults in my life have issues and communication problems that that I would say led to me um, maybe growing up feeling like, well, maybe I just need everybody to get along. Let's all get along. Right. So I, I think that's probably where it stems from is just observing conflict from a young age and not knowing how to like respond. Like, yeah. I mean, when you're four yeah. or five years old and like your parents argue and like, these are the, the big superhumans that like are your whole world. And then they start to make a lot of loud noises and you're like, uh, I can't do anything with this. You know what I mean? Like things are out of control, right? So it gets to feel very scary and and dangerous. And how does that how does that look today? I mean, your progress. You say my healing journey. So what have what have been the improvements? And how is life better today, having gone through the therapy and the self reflection and the the studies? Like what's what's better today because of your work? I will say. Um letting go of the perfectionism has been the biggest thing for me. Um, even with my page, I've been quite spontaneous. So if I have just, if a creativity hits me all of a sudden and I'm writing a prose piece or poetry or something, I'm like, okay, I need to post this now. I don't even have a second thought when old me would have been like, no, my writing is no good. I, I shouldn't share it with others. But now I'm like, no, let me share it. Somebody will like it, even if it's one person. <laughs> so yeah, I and it, you know, I will say my very first therapist, she taught me something that I still really hold close to my heart today. She taught me that your best will look different each day. And that is really what helped me address the perfectionism is embracing the fact that your best is not going to be the same as yesterday's best. It's not going to be the same as tomorrow's best. Just know that you're doing the best you can. And that's all that matters. Don't, don't compare yourself. Don't compare your yesterday self to your today self. Just focus on yourself for now. And that, that's really what's helped me a lot. So I'm really grateful to that therapist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's sort of a spin on that be here now, right? There is no past. There is no future. Just be here now. You're always in that now. That's that's interesting. And I, I think another thing that's it's cool with that too is um, 
early on there were issues, you know, you get nervous public speaking and things like that. Like people like people rate like public speaking as like the most stress inducing experience ever, you know, it's tough. But one of the, one of the thoughts that I was, I was given is that you have to understand that they don't know what you meant to do, right? So if you put out a post and it's not perfect or exactly as you wanted it to be, your viewers are the people who receive your post. For all they know, that's exactly what you wanted to put out, right? <laughs> so, so it's not like they have the script at home and go, oh, she missed this or she missed that, you know? Um, and the other piece of that is the, is the more individual I think something is, the more universal it is, right? So it may be messy or maybe ugly. Or say, but this is how I'm feeling today. You'll always be amazed at how many people respond to that and go, yes, that's that authenticity. That's exactly how I'm feeling too, you know? And uh, I think that can be very comforting to people when they realize they're not alone, that a lot of people are having similar experiences.